Hi there and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at how to build an awesome looking navbar with HTML and CSS. On my screen right now I've got a finished version of what we're going to be doing and I think I've got it looking pretty good. I got my logo over here, I got my links, and I put this kind of fun little hover effect on there to make it a little bit more interesting than what we normally see. So let's dive in there and see how we can do this. So the first thing we have to focus on is the markup or just our basic HTML. And there's not very much to this since we're just looking at the navigation menu. So let's jump in here and just do uh, the first thing I have is my logo, so which is just a nice little image. Uh, assets logo PNG. That's my logo. And uh, I'm going to give it a class of logo while I'm here. Let's jump back to my file, save that. Whoops, I'm on the wrong. There we go. Uh, there's my nav bar popping up, my little logo that I created. And the next thing I want to do is come down here and let's make a nav, close nav, and let's come right to there. We need a UL, close UL, and then we need li a href. Uh, let's just close a close li so uh, then I have a list item with my link inside and if you're not sure why I'm using a list item it's because list items are the most prevalent way uh, not way the most prevalent thing you'll see people use for navigations these days and I'm having trouble talking and typing at the same time so let's finish that save there we go we see it that really ugly blue it sort of hurts the eyes right now while it's on that gray uh, so as I was saying um, unordered lists are the most prevalent way of creating navigation menus it's not the only way there's other ways of doing it but if you're just getting into HTML and CSS which I'm assuming you are if you're watching this it's just you'll see it everywhere. If you're using a template, you're using something like Bootstrap, Foundation, or other frameworks, uh, you're going to see things like this. If you're using templates that you've downloaded, if you're editing somebody else's site, this is what you'll see. And really, it makes sense. Uh, once you think about it for a second, this is a list of all the different pages on my website. And that's it. Um, we have my list of websites, so I'm using my unordered list. I'm putting it in a nav tag just to be a little semantic there, which is all inside my header. Uh, I'm using a container here. I uh, forgot to show that to you before. So I have the container. That was what we were starting off with. And uh, if I jump into my styles, the container just has a width of 80% now to stop it from holding up on the side of the page. And I have my background color no margins and I just changed my font over here and I'm using a Google font so I've linked that Google font right there. I'm just going to set a nice background color on here that nice tealish D6AA and there we go that comes in and looks very pretty and now generally speaking the next thing that you're going to do is something like this. I want my logo to stay on the left. So I'm going to do a float left and that's going to free up all this empty space over here. It's going to let my list come up. So when I save that, you can see my list sort of moves up there. There's some other weird issues coming up, but that's okay. And that's fine. Now I'm just going to take my whole nav. We want that to be on the right float right. And it goes over there and I go, oh man, what happened? My header disappeared. Oh, well that's weird. Uh, this is a problem you've probably run into before. This is floating left, this is floating right. The container there inside just shrinks away to zero pixels. It's still there, but it's ignoring all the floating items. Um, so I'm just going to do a nice little clear fix on this of header after uh, content is, whoops, display table and clear both and like magic it comes back now if you don't know how this clear fix is working you don't really get it I'm just gonna put a link down in uh, the description below that goes into a lot more detail on what this is 
uh, from CSS tricks that, um, but this is pretty much, you know, I wouldn't always have it on my header necessarily. I'd probably set up a clear fix class that I could use wherever I need it. But in, you know, this is exactly what we'd be doing. It's just pretty much putting in something that has a clear after both of these uh, that sets it up properly. Now the next thing I always do is uh, nav ul. So I want to select my unordered list inside my navigation. Now let's just give myself some space here so it's easier for you guys. Um, you know this is the only unordered list on this page, so I could just do ul. But of course I want to be a bit more specific. Let's say that you know hopefully this would actually be getting used on a real website, and I want to make sure that only my navigations ul gets this of a margin zero and you're going to see that's going to take that space off on the top and the bottom when i save that next is padding zero and it, actually we won't see a change there uh, but the padding there is a space on the side here that just disappeared and last but not least list style none and now if we come and look here when I save, boop, there go those dots that looked really ugly. Awesome. Um, so let's go now and I want my nav li. So I want the list items because I have a problem right now. My list items are all stacked one on top of each other. And obviously they need to go next to each other and not on top of each other. So uh, there's a few ways I could do a, a float left and it works, they go up next to each other. I actually prefer you not using float here. I prefer using a display inline block. Um, it does put a little space between them. Most of the time that doesn't cause an issue for me. And I personally think it m is a bit more versatile because it lets me use um, different text alignment on it. Uh, I can do text align right, text align left, text align center. Uh, in this case, it wouldn't really make a big difference, but in other scenarios, um, it can, you know, come in. I find this more versatile, but if you want to use floats, go for that. Uh, there's no problem with that at all. I'm also going to uh, do a margin left of about 70 pixels. And there we go. Uh, just to give my space in between each one. Now, I could do just a margin 35, let's say margin uh, zero top and bottom, 35 left and right. But you can see how that pushed it away here. Let's do an undo on that. Let's just do margin zero. So if I leave my mouse here, it pushes away from my mouse. So it's putting a big empty space here. And I don't want that because ideally all my content on this page will be lined up nicely on the right side. So I want my margin only to be on the left. Margin left, 70 pixels. Uh, it keeps my spacing the same, but it keeps my alignment nice there. And I'm also going to give a padding top of 25 pixels. And let's just save that. Um, this is going to fix some things in a second. and. This is really specific for this one, uh, just because of how I'm going to be creating this little animation on the top right there. So it doesn't always have to be a padding top, but in this case, uh, that's what we're going to want to go with. Okay, and let's just, we, you know, it sort of looks kind of crappy right now. Let's just go in my logo and add a padding of, say, 10 pixels, zero. Let's see what that looks like. There we go, just to give myself a little bit of space on the top and the bottom. And it sort of centers that at the same time. Uh, you know what, this padding, let's make it like 23 maybe. Yeah, it looks more centered, I think. Sort of just eyeballing it, but there we go. Okay, I keep adding this empty space and I think it's gonna get rid of it again on me, um, but that's okay. Uh, let's make our links look a little bit better. So my nav A. And of course, I'm doing nav A. This could be my nav U L L I A. You'll see that. Uh, you'll see. You know, let's get really specific. Things like this. Uh, if you do, I'm not getting that specific because I don't have to. 
uh, if it was a bigger project where there's lots of different use cases maybe I'd need to in this case nice and simple the only links I'm going to have in my navigation are these ones so uh, I'm just gonna keep it like this so let's change our color right away that looks a lot better uh, let's turn off that underline text decoration none um, text transform my auto completion thing isn't working very well today transform uppercase as uh, you see I love the text transform uppercase I think it works really really well um, is my font weight correct? I don't feel like my font weight is okay. Uh, 300. Hmm. Pretty sure it's okay. Am I linking to the right? Yeah. Ah, it is what it is. It looks a little thin here, I find, but that's okay. And, oh, maybe it's because the font size is too small. Let's font size. Makes it, oh yeah, it would have been 16, whatever. Um, it is what it is. Let's keep going. It's a little light. Maybe I'll come back to that after just to make it so we can see that a little bit better. And the last thing just for now that I'm going to do is come in and give that a hover. So my hover, um, let's just change the color to black. And take a look and yeah, we can barely see that. Um, I linked this to the th font weight 300. Let's move that up to a 400 and just make sure I'm linking to the 400. Save, save. There we go. We can see that a little bit better now. Okay. Perfecto. Um, now the tricky part comes in. So I have this hover effect. It's not even that obvious. It's really, really subtle. Uh, I want it to stay settled like that. It's sort of part of the point, but I want we want to add this effect into the top. That's really what's showing that we're selecting that page, or that we're hovering over that link before we click on it. So uh, to do that, there's a few things we got to set up first. I want to use um, a pseudo element, uh, which is the before. It's sort of like here where I'm setting up an after and. Uh, I'm putting in a, a table that's not actually in my HTML. I want to be doing the same thing. I want this to be a little block level element that hides and shows when I hover on top here. So there's a few things that I need to do. The first thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to set up my list item to be uh, oops, position relative uh, and it's important that my position is relative on this uh, and we'll see why in a second so let's come after all this and we're gonna set up a nav a before so uh, it's sort of when you do the before like this it's in my link before the text what are we gonna have so the first thing I need to say that there's content and there's actually no content in there. I'm going to display block. Okay, block. Uh, let's give it a height of five pixels to start with, a width of 100% and a background color that matches our text 444. Uh, so you can see, bang, there they are. There was the, those elements coming in right there. Uh, they're five pixels tall. They have a width of 100%. Uh, that's 100% of my A. So, uh, or actually, it's probably 100% of my list item, actually. And this is where this position relative is helping out. If I take that off and I save. Uh, no, it doesn't change anything. Hmm, I thought it would have there. That's okay. That's not really what's the point of this position relative. Uh, where that position relative really kicks in is when I do uh, display block, I want to do a pull. Oh, <laughs> this width 100%. That's okay. Uh, position absolute. 
and you can see it sort of went crazy right now. Um, position. There we go. Uh, I knew this was supposed to be doing something. So uh, if this is position absolute and the width is set to 100%, you can see it's actually shooting and I'm getting this big side scroll. It's going to 100% of my screen size. Uh, the absolute positioning is absolute relative to my browser window. Unless I change this to relative. And now this absolute positioning is relative to my list item and it works much nicer. It's keeping 100% of my list item rather than 100% of my screen with that big side scroll that was going on. Uh, with this, I can also do a top of zero and bang, that looks a lot better. And I'm just gonna move this width down here because they sort of play together. So it's up exactly where I want it to be. Uh, the trick right now is I don't actually want to see it. So my width is going to be starting as 0% and it disappears. So it's there, but it has a width of zero. And now what I need to do is come in uh, my nav a before, uh, that's not right. My nav a hover before Oh, we're getting crazy with our pseudo stuff here. And all I need to do is the width of 100%, I believe. And there we go. Uh, it's bang. When I hover over, the width switches from 0 to 100%. And I see that going over. And right away already, that's kind of cool. But it's really, you know, when you're going fast, you just see this little, like, you know, that can get kind of annoying. Uh, and it can go a little too fast, maybe, for you and too flickery and all of that. So we can just come in with a nice little transition on here. Transition, oh, not text align. Let's type it out then, transition. Uh, let's just do, I'm gonna transition all. Let's do a nice ease in out, which is my favorite transition at uh, 250 milliseconds. And whoop, whoop. And even if someone goes really fast, it doesn't get that annoying little flash that we were getting before. It just sort of like, you know, animates in and out the whole time. Um, obviously, if I make this longer, let's make it a thousand, which would be way too slow. Um, but it gives you that nice little animation there, but nobody's actually gonna hover over and wait for it to animate. So, you know, two, 200, 250 is probably a nice little compromise where it comes in, you can see the animation nicely uh, and I think it looks pretty nifty and good. Um, so at the end there, it got a little tricky, and I had to do a few things that if you're not familiar with uh, the CSS, the basic CSS, it might be like, what's he doing with all this weird stuff here? You know, the A hover before and all that. But uh, try it out, play around with it a little bit. The best way to get better at this stuff is to experiment to see really what's going on. So. Um, but if you have any questions or anything like that, just go down into the comments below and ask away. Uh, I'm glad to help out. That's what I'm here for is to show you guys fun, new, cool things, help you understand a little bit more. And this channel is all about making the internet look a little bit nicer at the same time. So we want to learn how to do it, but we want to learn how to make it look good too. So I hope you like this. I hope uh, you, you know, you take something away from it, try something out, you know, see if you can do something even cooler now that you know how to do this. And if you do something cooler, make sure you link to it down in the comments below so I can check it out. I'm going to do my best to reply to everybody that uh, does leave a comment. So even if you're just saying hi, I'd like to say hi back to you. And yeah, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you had as much fun watching this as I had making it. And until next time, have yourselves a great day.